Hi, this is Peter from Anatomy Zone, and in this Neuroanatomy Basics tutorial, we're going to take a look at the structure of the synapse. There are two types of junctions between neurons. You've got chemical synapses, and then you've got electrical synapses. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at the chemical synapse. So in a chemical synapse, you've got a substance called neurotransmitter, which is released from the presynaptic neuron and diffuses across a small gap to bind to receptors on the postsynaptic neuron. An electrical synapse, on the other hand, actually has a direct connection between the two cells. And this direct connection is called the gap junction. Examples of the electrical synapse can be found in cardiac muscle and also in smooth muscle. And the, the purpose of the, the electrical gap junction in cardiac muscle is that you get extremely fast conduction. So you can imagine in a beating heart, you need extremely fast and synchronized conduction so that the contraction of the heart is coordinated. So you've got this direct coupling from one cell to the other in an electrical synapse. So what you can see here is the axon endings of one neuron connecting with the dendrites of another neuron. So we're going to take a look at the structure of the chemical synapse. Now what we're looking at here is the axon of one neuron and then it's coming down to form this terminal bouton, or this synaptic terminal. You've got this little gap between the presynaptic neuron and the postsynaptic neuron here and this little gap is called the synaptic cleft. This membrane here is the postsynaptic membrane and this membrane here is the presynaptic membrane. So let's take a look at what happens at this junction. Within this synaptic bouton, you've also got these vesicles, which are membrane-bound structures which contain the neurotransmitter, so the chemical which will bind to the postsynaptic receptors. So how does the chemical within these vesicles actually get into the synaptic cleft? Well, this is all to do with the electrical impulse that is transmitted down the axon. So an action potential arrives in the synaptic bouton from the axon. And when this happens, you get an influx of calcium from the extracellular space into the presynaptic nerve ending. So when this action potential comes down the axon and into the terminal, the change in voltage across the membrane actually causes these calcium channels to open and allow the calcium into the presynaptic ending. So this type of channel is called a voltage-gated channel because it's dependent on the voltage across the membrane. What happens when the calcium enters the presynaptic ending is that the vesicles dock and fuse to the presynaptic membrane. The next thing that happens is a process called exocytosis. This is the process by which the vesicles fuse to the presynaptic membrane and then release their contents into the synaptic cleft. The next thing that happens is that the neurotransmitter diffuses this short distance across the cleft and it then binds to these receptors which you can see embedded in the postsynaptic membrane. The ion channel within the receptor can then open up and allow ions from the extracellular fluid to enter into the postsynaptic neuron. This change in ion concentration can then potentially lead to the generation of another action potential which can propagate down this postsynaptic neuron. The final step of this process is neurotransmitter elimination or reuptake into the presynaptic terminal. So to illustrate this whole process with a specific example, we could take a look at the neuromuscular junction. So this is where the nervous system is in contact with the muscles. In this particular example, the neuron, the presynaptic neuron, would be a motor neuron and the postsynaptic neuron isn't actually a neuron, it would be the muscle cell. So this, the process is the same in that an action potential arrives into the synaptic bouton, you get calcium influx, and you get fusion of the vesicles to the presynaptic membrane. Within the vesicles, you'd have acetylcholine. So in the case of neuromuscular transmission, the neurotransmitter in question is called acetylcholine. You then get fusion of these acetylcholine containing vesicles to the presynaptic membrane. The process of exocytosis releases the acetylcholine into the synaptic cleft. 
it diffuses across this small distance and binds to postsynaptic receptors on the muscle cell membrane. The receptors on the muscle cell are known as nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. So once the neurotransmitter binds to this receptor on the postsynaptic membrane, it allows the receptor to open, and once open, ions can flow into the cell. This influx of ions allows changes in the membrane potential, so the potential difference across the membrane, and this change in voltage may stimulate another action potential to be formed and allow information to be transmitted down the postsynaptic neuron. So let's just take a closer look at the postsynaptic receptor. So we've zoomed in to the cell membrane and what we're looking at here is one of the receptors embedded within the phospholipid bilayer of the cell membrane. We've got the extracellular space out here and the intracellular space in here. In purple we've got sodium ions and in green we've got calcium ions and these you can see are in the extracellular fluid. On the inside we've got the potassium ions. So this red triangle represents acetylcholine, the neurotransmitter that we just talked about. So when the neurotransmitter binds to the receptor you can see that it opens the channel and this allows the influx of the ions which are higher in concentration in the extracellular fluid to pass into the intracellular fluid where they're lower in concentration. So you've got the sodium ions and you've also got the calcium ions entering the intracellular space. And in contrast you've got the potassium ions which flow down their gradient out of the cell. So these changes in ionic concentration may allow an action potential to be generated and for another signal to pass down the postsynaptic neuron. So that's a brief look at the structures of the synapse and the basis of transmission from one neuron to the next. If you have found this video helpful, please click the like button, subscribe to our channel and make sure you check out some more of our videos. Thank you for watching.